Well, it was a good win for Tottenham at home today against Leicester City by three goals to nil. All three of those goals scored in the first half. A comfortable win in the end, Tim. Leicester defensively gave the game away. They looked sloppy in defence today and it was an easy ride for Tottenham in the end. It was. I mean, the damage, Michael said, the damage was done in the first half. Um, Counter-attack, game plan from Jose, just sit in. Leicester will want all possession. And they were so naive on the defensive side. You cannot get counter-attack. There's two ways of stopping counter-attacks. You cannot give away possession in thing. You have to be very secure, especially when you're standing in such expansive positions. They make the pitch so big when they get the ball. At times, they're very good at it. But if they turn over possession, then the opposition are right in the heart of you. And they had two guys at the back there today, in Morgan especially, and Bennett, who cannot run with that space in behind. And they just got exploited by the pace of Son, Lucas Moura and Harry Kane, who just dropped into the area. So because they haven't got the pace, they're on the halfway line. The ball's dropping in there. You need to go tight. You need to foul Harry Kane in his own half. Then you're not going to give a, get a booking. Then you're not going to get in trouble with a referee. Instead, they got just drop off, but still hold the line, the halfway line. Time and time again, Harry Kane dropped into the area, got himself on a turn, waited for the runners, just slipped him in, then they're in behind, then they're in major trouble. They backed off and backed off into the penalty area and they get beat, all ends up. Today, the game plan from Jose worked perfectly. The game plan from Brendan Rodgers never worked at all. Even though they had triple the attempts at goal that uh, um, uh, Tottenham had, yeah. but clinical finishing, Michael, was just the key to that today. It was, yeah. I mean, they were clinical, Tottenham. Um... But uh, it's so difficult. I'm, I'm watching the, the game and thinking, what, what can you do as a centre half there? They've got their two full backs are out. They've got their main centre half alongside Johnny Evans is out. They're playing with a five. So basically, four of the five don't normally start. Two of them, one's won the league with Leicester. What, you know, and then the other one is, is you know, getting on and, and can't really run. And you're trying to play a possession based game and you're, you're susceptible to the. The counter attack. It's, it's not easy buying good centre halves that are going to be a substitute, basically. But that's what we've seen. As soon as you get an injury or a suspension, all of a sudden mm -hmm. you've got to put these reserve players in, and then it's just a disaster. Mm -hmm. And it's well, it was a disaster today. Too many mistakes, mm -hmm. and uh, and Tottenham ran out easy winners. And Leicester have been playing with a bit of a makeshift defence for, for quite some time as well. Ricardo Pereira got injured before yeah. the break. James Justin has had to replace him. He's done an all right job. Yeah. shift defence for, for quite some time as well. Ricardo Pereira got injured before yeah. the break. James Justin has had to replace him. He's done an all right job, yeah. but against a side like Tottenham, who yeah. are so potent going forward and alongside other inexperienced yeah. defenders, it's a bit of a mismatch. No, Justin's done OK, yeah. but Ricardo's a massive miss because he gives them so much going forward. Ben Chilwell's missing today, so Thomas struggled in there today, gave the ball away twice, got punished for it. But the two centre-backs are not conditioned. They play three Premier League games each, all season. So it's very tempting. I know if I'm, I've been in that position, if I'm Brendan Rodgers, I'm saying, well, I'm playing Sonia on two and Johnny Evans because I know they're very solid. But when that day comes with one of them or two of them does get injured, you're going to have to rely on the boys who are in reserve. And them boys, not, they, we know they're good enough. Like Michael said, certainly with Morgan, he's won a Premier League. Bennett... I'm not too sure about. He's a good covering defender if you need him, if you're desperate. But they was not conditioned. They wasn't fit enough today. Harry Kane is back to his full fitness, and we're going to mm. see that a bit later on. Got destroyed. Got Let's destroyed now, physically Tim. today. Yeah, he, he was excellent today, Harry Kane. And you did some analysis on him before the match, Michael. Was this as good as Harry Kane has been since the restart? Well, I know from experience that hamstring injuries are not easy to come back from, and look at that. He's just galloped 90 yards in just over 10 seconds. I mean, that goes to prove that he's fine and he's fit and he's very healthy. We also said in, uh, prior to the match that it's this left channel that both Jamie Vardy and Harry Kane like to attack. He could have been played offside there. Barnes has just played him on, onside. But once he gets in, once he makes that lovely diagonal run, he stays onside, it's a great finish. And his celebration reflects what he's just done a minute earlier. He lies down because he's absolutely knackered, <laughs> having done a 90-yard lung buster. Yeah, he was absolutely brilliant today, wasn't he, Tim? He's so hungry for goals. He is the type of striker that no matter what situation he's in, he will always make these sort of runs and attack the goal. Yeah, I mean, this was 
poor defending. I mean, he comes inside, Morgan does nothing as well. He comes inside, Bennett and Morgan, I'm not sure what you're doing. You're meant to make yourself big. You are considerably big. So what he does, he turns his back to the side and he makes himself as small as he possibly can do. He has to be taking that one in the face. Poor defending. The young boy, Thomas, gives the ball away. Mora nicks it off him, good pressing, and then they're straight in it. Yeah, it was a continuous theme through the whole of the first half. And we've seen that type of finish before, haven't we, from Harry Kane, cutting in against Arsenal, I remember, some, yeah. some seasons ago. and it's Because uh, when he got the ball originally, I, I, the last thing I was thinking was goal. Yeah. I was thinking, is he going to go down on the left? Is he going to cross it? Is he going to pass it back? All of a sudden, touch, touch. As I say, we've seen it all before. It was a brilliant finish. Let's hear from the Tottenham goal scorer now. Harry, obviously you've played a huge part for your team out there today. But firstly, let's start with the team. How good a performance was it? Yeah, really good. First half especially, I think, uh, obviously caught them on the counter-attack quite a lot. Uh, really explosive when we won the, won the ball back and obviously took our chances, clinical. Second half, obviously, I think we, we probably dropped too deep, but we got the job done, you know. Um, didn't create too many chances, but they didn't, they didn't either. So, uh, yeah, really good win for us. So two goals for you and a, a huge part you played in the first goal as well. Just tell us, maybe... After coming back from lockdown and a big injury, how confident and sharp did you feel today? Yeah, really good. I, I said before, um, before this game, obviously, it can be a chance to, to rest and recover and uh, done a lot of work outside of, outside of the club as well to, to feel good. And I'm, I'm feeling as good as I, I have done probably for the last four or five years now. So, um, yeah, obviously, good to, to be finishing strong. Uh, we know we've got one more game now and hopefully we can win and, and I can score a couple more. Gary Neville said on commentary, you've got your running power back. Would you agree with that? Yeah, well, it depends how when, when he's talking about. I think. Uh, I suppose say, he's saying you lost it for a time, which is not running power back. Would you agree with that? Yeah, well, it depends how when, when he's talking about. I think. Uh, I suppose say, he's saying you lost it for a time, which is not nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that people. There's been a lot of people talking over the last year or so, you know, and um, yeah, I, I keep performing week in, week out. I work hard for the team. I score goals. So that's all I can do. So uh, I like to do my talking on the pitch, and, and that's what we've done today. Do you listen to that sort of stuff, or if you don't mean to listen? Do you hear it? No, I, I take it as uh, trying to trying to become better. You know, everyone's going to talk, everyone's got an opinion, um, but when you're, you're scoring goals every season, 20 plus every year, injuries without injuries, um, yeah, that, that shows what I can do on the pitch. So um, I'll keep doing what I'm doing. People will keep talking, uh, and we'll go from there. Have you had to adjust or change at all? in a good or a bad way for the new manager? No, no, obviously it's a, it's a different style to, to Maurizio. Um, but yeah, look, we've been getting used to it. We had a lot of time to work on it uh, during, the, during the period we was off. Uh, obviously it was hard uh, for him coming during the season to try and put his stamp on it straight away because we had so many games. But uh, we've been able to do that for the last, uh, well, especially the last three games, three good wins now. Um, so yeah, we've got to try and finish it off strong next Sunday. And they're a good opponent for you, aren't they, Leicester? You yeah, personally. for some reason it's one of them teams I seem to seem to score uh, a few goals against. So, um, but look, they're a good side. They're obviously fighting for Champions League. I think we caught them on the break today. We caught them, um, yeah, uh, like I said, on the counter attacks. And um, yeah, once we got ahead, we kind of we steadied the ship. And obviously the clean sheet was great as well. Final word then on your second goal. Just talk us through what you saw. Cause you had virtually nothing to aim at. Yeah, it's just one of them. Uh, obviously, the ball just got away from me to begin with. So uh, when you're in that position, not many players around. Obviously, I'd like to try and cut in and, and try and find that far post. Sometimes it, it comes off, sometimes it don't. Thankfully, it did today. So, um, yeah, nice goal. And obviously, always nice to get the third one because it kind of uh, takes a bit of the pressure off. Well done, Harry. Cheers. Thank you. Two goals for Harry Kane today makes it 14 goals in 10 league appearances against Leicester. Now, they are a team he likes to play against. His reaction to that interview there, Tim, quite interesting. He got quite defensive over a bit of criticism. Yeah, I think um, he listens to people, uh, listens to what everyone says, and, and he cares. And if people unfairly criticise him, I think he takes it to heart. I think, uh, listen, he's, he, he's what he say, he said it himself there, score plus of 20 goals every single season. Uh, now he's established in the Premier League. It's hard to give him... The stick, you know, he's had some, he's had some injuries as well to deal with. But pound for pound, for me, he's still the best striker in the Premier League. He's a perfectionist. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's obviously top class. I'd, to be honest, I didn't think uh, his response warranted, or, or you know, the question warranted his response. Really, he, he looked a little bit prickly to me. He's just scored two goals. Everyone can see he's back to his best, and there's no question for the people who've had hamstring injuries. 
you you do have a, a lack of power for the first sort of few games, and, and especially and more of a mental scar more than anything as well. So um, I'm not sure whether there's something that has happened before there, whether it, you know someone's criticised him, and he's he's got it, you know he's he's got it in his mind. But I think it's all positive from Harry Kane today. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, certainly scoring a couple of goals, you'd be he, delighted. Yeah, he had a good game today, as we as we've said. He exploited that Leicester defence. We talked about it being a mismatch. How much did you see that, Tim? Well, it was a mismatch. When, you, when, you're, when your wing-back goes so far forward and, you're, and your defence plays so high, and then basically you're saying Morgan and Bennett versus Kane and Son, that is a total mismatch. When you get that space in behind, you've got the quality of Winks on that occasion, or whoever the midfield players who can play for Tottenham. This is Harry Kane. What a pass that is. Blind pass there, in behind Morgan, and then he's toiling to get back at Son. Unlucky not to get a free kick there. But when you leave that sort of space in behind you, Michael will know he wanted the space. Yeah, it, didn't you, Michael? You want oh, him yeah. to defend high up the field so you can run in behind with the pace what you had. These guys, Harry Kane's not the fastest, but he knew he was faster than that guy. He knew he was faster than Bennett. He knew he had the pace of him. But I'll tell you who is quick enough. You know, I saw Harry Kane coming off as a 10 today. Son was going in behind. Mora was going in behind. They would cause them all sorts of problems on the counter-attack. Took advantage, didn't he? The problem is, you know, you, you, can, you can have tactics all you like. If you're simply not good enough in any department, then you're going to struggle. Harry Kane can come off. They're not good enough to, to go tight. He can roll them. He'd sprint away from them. They squeeze up and push into it. He can go behind. So can Son. You know, it's, it's very difficult. If, you, if you're just not up to the standard of Harry Kane and Son, we're talking about two of the best attackers in the world, if you've got two players that are rusty, let's say, mm. maybe aging, maybe getting slower and all these different things, you know, we can sit here and say they should have done this. Sometimes, you use the word, it's just a mismatch. No matter what you do, yeah. they are just too good for them. It was a physical thing today, wasn't it, Michael? But mm. sometimes the manager's watching. Brendan's watching them in training. He knows they're not physical specimens at this present moment in time with such little game time. So you have to change your tactics. You have to defend deeper. You have to bring your midfield back a little bit. I like the word, and I admire that the, he wants to play with his own structure and his, and his own identity. But sometimes, when you're playing against a team who you know are going to counter attack and you know they have potent attackers, you've got to adjust. You've got to take, take a step back. But today, they played into the hands of, mm. of Jose Mourinho's side. Yeah. Jose, final home game of the season. How good was it from your players? I think we were. Staff in the second half was more about being compact and play for the result because. Uh, these three points were yes or yes. If we don't win this game, we have no chances for the last one. So they had lots of shots, lots of possession, but tactically, did you always feel in control of the match? Yeah. You have always a danger. You always need your goalkeeper to make a couple of uh, important saves, which which he did. But we were uh, we were phenomenal. They had so many corners. We were so much in. In control, our block was always in in control, and um, I felt very, very comfortable during the game. How good was Harry Kane today? Uh, he was very, very good, and of course, uh, two two very important goals for us. And I think the the third one is is uh, is Harry Kane's goal. Uh, amazing quality in, in his in his shot. I think it's now. 13 goals in 18 games under you that he's scored and you've managed some top-class strikers, but is he right up there with the best? Of course he is. Of course it's difficult for me to compare uh, uh, strikers, but uh, I had, almost in every club, I had some of the best and, uh, of course, Harry is second to, to none. Just different, uh, different qualities. But as a, as a striker, as a goal scorer, as a team player, as, as a leader, I think he's, he's fantastic. Do you think you can make him better? <laughs> it's difficult to make him better. I think uh, the better the team is, uh, the better he can be. Uh, but I think it depends more on, on us, it depends more on, on the team as, as globality than himself, because he's an amazing professional, works very, very well. He cannot work better than, than what he does during the, um, during the week. Uh, he's a fantastic striker and uh, so happy. And Tottenham is so lucky to have him. 
even if it didn't lead to you getting into the Europa League, how important is it, the form you're showing now? It's very important. That's what I always told. Uh, it was very important the way we ended, what we were showing after after um, this this long break, because uh, the long break is not so open like a, a pre-season hopefully is, because we had lots of limitations, but was good enough for us, for the players, to feel that with work, that with time, we could uh, improve. So. I think clearly we are one of the teams with more points during this uh, this period after after the the break, and I think that is a very very good uh, feeling. Now we have to fight to finish six, but doesn't depend on us. We we have to to win, and that is difficult at Palace. But we have to try to win and wait for something in with other opponents. Um, if not seventh, because seventh is um, what we can achieve independent of the others, and we finish seventh, we still depend on the FA Cup um, final. But getting or not getting to Europa League, I think the feeling of uh, what we are doing, what we are improving, I think is very important for the next season. Thank you. Thanks, Jose. Well, Tottenham currently occupy sixth place in the Premier League table after their win over Leicester City, which is one of the guaranteed Europa League spots if they can stay there. Tim, you talked before the match about the minimum requirement Tottenham needed this season for it to not be deemed a failure. In the context of European places, then, how big a win was this? Massive. Jose said it himself. It was a must-not-lose game and... And they managed to get the three points. Now they have to go to Pal uh, Palace and they have to win that game. You know, it's really important. I think the before the lockdown, you would have given them no chance. You know, the, without Son, without Harry Kane, since the restart, both of them have been fit. They've been firing. They've scored eight goals since the restart, the pair of them. So it has benefited them. Mm. You know, no one wanted it. No one wanted the break, obviously, in full upon us all. Um, but Tottenham are one of the teams who have benefited, but they need to see the job off. As I say, it's fine margins at the top, fighting for the top four, fighting for Europa League. It is massive. Every single game, there's something on it, and there's still something to play for. I think Wolves will win their next game, then they jump above, then they've got it all to play for. They have to go to Palace and they have to win that football match, and then they will, it's in their own hands. It is so impressive the restart table, if you look at how the teams have got on, Tottenham are actually third in that table since coming back from the enforced break, Michael. That is an impressive run of form under Jose Mourinho since then. It is an impressive... Yeah, of course it is. I'm not going to take anything away from, from Jose Mourinho and, and what he's done. We saw a table just before the game, though, that had him in fourth, which, again, is impressive if you, if you don't look at the numbers and, and think, oh, it's fourth, it's, it's almost Champions League since he's, uh, he's been taken over. But... He was miles away from Liverpool, miles away from Manchester City in terms of points. Manchester United were quite a way ahead as well. They were only one point ahead of Wolves and two points ahead of Burnley since Jose's take uh, come in. And I was looking at it thinking, OK, if you just say, yeah, we're, we've, we're fourth since Jose come in, and I'm sure Jose Mourinho said that to as, as many people that will listen. It, is that good enough? Is that, you know, fourth, OK, in isolation, but one defeat and they're all of a sudden six or seven. That's not... They got going to the Champions League final last year. I mean, they're one of the... They've got the best stadium in the country. They're, they've got some of the best players in the country. Coming fourth and being miles behind Liverpool and Manchester City is actually a massive step down from last season. So, yes, it's looking better. Results like today, of course, make it look better. We put graphs up um, and tables like that. It's, uh, it's, it's good since lockdown, of course it is. But over a period of time since Jose's come in, he's done all right. He's done all right, but not brilliant and certainly not a disaster. But if you ask Tottenham fans, I'm not sure they're all happy at the moment. Hmm. It's interesting, isn't it, Tim? And Jose Mourinho was full of praise there for Harry Kane, wasn't he, in his <laughs> interview. However, he said he doesn't think he can make Harry Kane better. It's the players around him that can make him better. But can Harry Kane be at his best playing in this style of football under Jose Mourinho? Well, when he scores two goals in the last two games, he could be happy. Harry Kane is happy. though. If he's happy if he's scoring, Michael would tell you, if you're scoring goals, you're happy. But I think he preferred the other style under Pochettino when they were on the front foot, when they were creating more chances. They haven't had one touch of the ball in Leicester's penalty area in the second half. 
Now, it's hard to criticise what Jose's done because he's getting the points on the board. But it's not just about points. It's about trophies. The fans want trophies. They won't tolerate that style of football and nor will Harry Kane. Your question to me was about Harry Kane. He is the world-class performer at Tottenham Hotspur. There will be a queue round the block to sign Harry Kane if he was available. They need to keep him at the football club. Jose just said it himself. He is so important to what they're going to achieve in the future. Without no Harry Kane, try and find a replacement. And I'd have to point out to everyone, it's not about spending money. Harry Kane costs how much? A square root of zero. Nothing from the academy. Jose needs to look in the academy and see if there's any more Harry Kanes. See if we give him an opportunity. That is what brave managers do. That's what managers with no money have to do. Some of the best players we've seen this season all over the Premier League are academy graduates. Sometimes they're there. I'm not saying they are. I don't know. I haven't looked what they've got in the academy. But it's not all about throwing millions and hundreds of millions of pounds at it. Well, I mean, what I'd just say, Jules, is as well, is that... I mean, I don't, certainly don't want to be a doom monger after today. It was a fantastic result. Harry Kane, there's so many positives. They're into a good position in the league. But what I don't ever do is get carried away by one game. And Leicester played into Tottenham's hands today. Leicester played with half of their team. I expected Tottenham to win. But I asked Tim a, a question now. I don't think that that style will suit Harry Kane going forward. He's not going to get enough of the ball. He's not going to get enough goals or what he's used to. And I asked you, do you think, you know Harry Kane so yeah. well, do you think he'll be happy playing in this style of play for a season, you know, for a season long? And do you think he'll be... I mean, of course, he wants to say at Tottenham, he wants to be there forever. Yeah. But only if they're winning things. If he's not, if he's playing in this and he's not getting many chances, do you think he'll stay? And yeah, not in I, the Champions League as well. No Champions League, so he's going to have to take that one on the chin. They're used to Champions League, as Michael said. Last four seasons, Champions League. Going deep into the competition. Finished in the final last year. They've digressed. One million percent they've digressed from, from last season. Yes, it's not all Jose Mourinho's fault because Pochettino had such a bad start in the league. Harry Kane will reassess. He knows where he wants to be. He does not care how much money he's got in the bank. In the end, what he cares about is how many medals he's going to have. At the moment, he's got zero medals. He needs to win things. He knows that. International uh, scores goals for England. England captain. All of that is brilliant. But at the end of your career, you, when your grandchildren come to you and you say, what did you win? They say, well, I've got millions of pounds. Yeah, we know that, Grandad, but where's your medal? <laughs> Tim, what you're saying Where's is your he's medal? leaving then. He needs he's to leaving win. He's leaving then. He, he's not going to win medals in the next he, year. He will assess. He will see what they want to do in the summer. If there's the players coming through, if their recruitment is good, not all about hundreds of million. I keep going back to that. But if their recruitment is good and Harry will assess the players coming into the club and how Jose wants to move it forward, if it's not to his satisfaction, he will ask to leave the football club. You're playing golf with him tomorrow. I want you to find out for us. 100%. <laughs> after my full 30. <laughs> <laughs> that won't happen then. That might be the only, <laughs> that might be the only thing he wins in the next year or two. <laughs>